Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and we're still here with the uh, 1930s, mid-1930s tube radio. Um, the, it's an RR radio uh, made in Belgium. Um, and um, in the last video I, yeah, you saw me having a bit of issues with the speaker because the, we have issues with the field coil. Um, and that's basically brought the entire project into question and um, I've been thinking a bit what I'm going to do with this radio. Um, am I going to go ahead with the restoration or not? And I made my decision. Um, I am going to fully restore the radio. Um, I found someone who wants to uh, rewind the, the, the field coil for me. So I need to ship it to him. He will rewind it and then I'll get it back. So that will take a while. Um, but in the meantime, we can do other things. Um, but I'm going to go all the way on this thing because, yeah, you see how bad it is. There's a lot of rust everywhere. Um, so it doesn't really make sense to just get this going and that's it. Because then, yeah, you will have a not so useful radio since it is only AM, obviously. And you also will have a radio that wouldn't look <laughs> particularly well. So um, I decided to really go all the way and uh, restore this all the way. Um, and I also thought, well, yeah, since it's going to be a long project, um, maybe it's a good idea to uh, group the content into different subjects and then release a video per subject, um, which means that I will not, the videos will not go all over the place and every video will focus on why one entire aspect of the radio or one entire yeah aspect of the restoration um but that means that maybe sometimes i um don't really ever not everything that you see is perfectly chronological because maybe i get stuck on a certain part of the radio and then um, I need to collect footage over multiple weeks, let's say, and then compile it all together into one episode. Um, so that means that the idea here is that, of course, the videos stay as much chronological as possible, but it could be that there is a gap here and there that then will be filled in uh, afterwards. So for to give you an example, um, I think I'm going to start now with a tuning condenser. Um, and we're gonna restore the tuning condenser first and the idea is then to put all the footage of the tuning condenser in this video um, and then only re release this video when I'm done with the tuning condenser and if I would get stuck on the tuning condenser for some reason then I'll do something else and then I'll wait to output all the um, footage of the tuning condenser until that part is finished. Th that's the idea, I don't know if it'll work, um, we will see. It could be that I abandon this ID during the restoration and I just go chronological anyway. Okay, so that's the ID for this video. Now the tuning condenser here, um, as you see, it needs a bit of work. <laughs> um, a bit is even an understatement. Um, there is a lot of rust on the chassis and as a result also on the tuning condenser. Let me um, show you here a bit more in close detail. See, yeah, it doesn't look great anymore. Now, uh, one of the nice things about this chassis is that everything is painted in the same color. So the cans, the tuning condenser, the chassis, and I also think the top side of the transformer as well, um, which means that they produced all these parts in-house, I think, or at least they went to the through the effort to paint all of these in-house. Um, and I think, honestly, that is quite unique. I don't think I have seen this before, that the tuning condenser and the cans and everything are painted in the same color as the chassis. Um, I have to admit, they did have quite a nice attention to detail. And it's, and it's not only the IF cans, it's also the tube shields. See, they are also in this same dark green army-like color. Um, so the challenge is now to find this um, this color. Um, I'm going to go deeper into that subject later, perhaps in this video still. Yeah, perhaps probably in this video. Um, but the thing is, yeah, 
there's a lot of rust everywhere and the yeah the paint is gone in most places here on the tuning condenser and on the chassis so if we're gonna restore this then i will have to repaint everything um and that means that everything needs to come off um of the cabinet now the tuning condenser needs to come off anyway because the grommets here in the on the feet they are obviously completely cooked well dried up um, see and, it, and it's loose as a result so it needs to come off anyway um, and um, i think that's the first thing that we're going to do take off the tuning condenser because it's also very very stuck yeah it's not completely stuck but it's so tight that you cannot move the condenser anymore so yeah we'll have to uh, de-rust everything i guess um so just as a reference for me mainly as well let me show you the connections so see here you have the the connection for the dial lamp for the the bulb um that's quite obvious then the first uh, gang of the tuning condenser is here via the grid cap for this tube connected to the first can second uh, gang goes also via this cap to the second gang and third gang i guess it is connected on the bottom here via this wire um, we'll have to check that when the tuning condenser is loose and then on the other side there we have another wire let me just focus the camera here Come on. See here we have another wire. Um, it's yeah probably the, the, the chassis point of the tuning condenser. So those are all the connections that we need to remove. Quite simple. So I'm just gonna go ahead, desolder these wires, um, and then we can see how we can get this thing off. So the wire coming from the third gang um, is this one over here and it's going here to the 2A7 um, tube which is the mixer oscillator um, and I can't reach it on the top of the um, condenser so we'll have to remove it from here we have to desolder here it from it here from the tube um, and then pull the wire through the chassis Oh, yeah, that's coming off very easily. And see if we can pull it through. Should be, just this capacitor is slightly in the way, but the hole where it's going through is really quite big, so that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, it's it, it'll pull out. Yeah, it pulls out very easily. Okay. Now, um, the tuning condenser itself is um, simply held in place with these four pins, um, um, not screws. See, so you have a grommet and then a washer, and then there is this yeah pin that is sticking through. Um, so let me just remove those, and then the tuning condenser should be completely loose, see? See, I'm just gonna do one here on video and see if if I can get it opened up and out. See, it's just both sides of these pin are, are bent over. Um, then it should come out via this side, yeah. Okay, then this should just pop out. So we have here the washer. See, and then this is what's uh, actually holding the tuning condenser in place. And these are brass pins, I guess. Um, so I'm just gonna take all four out um, and then we should be able to lift off the tuning condenser. Okay, so I think the 
tuning condenser should be totally loose now and let's see if it actually comes off yeah it does okay um, I'm gonna have a closer look at this thing and I'm good gonna put the chassis aside for a while okay so I lost a bit of footage here I already removed the dial lamp socket see that was sticking through here with a grommet which is basically not a grommet anymore totally cooked and totally yeah dried up um, what did I else did I say in the video that I'm that I lost um, yeah you can see how rusty the entire tuning condenser is here on this side you can also clearly see it um, so that means that it has to be redone completely also on the inside it's quite rusty um, so it has to be disassembled completely um, the first thing that I'm gonna do okay the first thing was the dial lamp and this bracket for the dial lamp actually also comes off maybe it's not a bad idea to remove that as well see so there is a screw underneath here there is some yeah it, there is paint inside this screw I think yeah it's painted just to make sure that it stays in its place but after so many years it doesn't make a lot of difference anymore it's a brass screw um, okay so I'm just gonna put that one aside as well and now this shaft here um, as you see it's also nice and rusty this is the shaft that you that the tuning knob is connected to and you see it's a bit yeah there is it's a bit textured over here where it rubs against this rubber wheel um, so you turn the shaft that turns the tuning this wheel here which turns the tuning condenser now it's the tuning condenser is all the way uh, closed and yeah it's so stuck that I can't really I'm not gonna force it to open but I think a big part of it is this rusted shaft and I'm going to remove it and it's also held in place with these pins just like the tuning condenser itself there's one over here and then there is a sort of yeah, spring washer over there and same here on this side so it should come out relatively easily but um, famous last words I would say See, there's one pin over here okay um, yeah part of it snapped off so we may, we might also need new um, clips for this and that's the washer is it actually made out of metal or no this is rubber I think I don't know I think it's sort of metal anyway I think we can reuse it um, here on this side same thing um, oh, it's so rusty I can barely even turn it around it's ugh. and these pins are also so rusty that um, when you put a bit of effort or force on them they just break off Uh, yeah okay that one came out and this just broke yeah into two pieces even uh, and now yeah normally this should come out but um, see it's so rusted inside that <laughs> uh, maybe I should take the rubber wheel off or yeah the, the big wheel off that might be a solution the big wheel here is held in place via two small screws visible over there fortunately I can reach them in this position that's one I'm just gonna loosen them slightly that's two and it doesn't budge ah there is also a clip on this side oh no there isn't no it doesn't budge um, okay uh, yeah I 
think this needs to come out, but it's so... Where is my WD-40? Okay. Yeah, that's making a big difference already. Also because now this um, this one is loose from the shaft so it doesn't have to turn the entire condenser anymore. But I should be able to pull this out. But uh, maybe I need to take out this one first. This, I guess, is the rod where the, uh, the pointer was attached to, which is missing on the radio. And there is a... Um, see, there is a, a cogwheel attached to this, but it was not sitting anymore in the correct position. So, um, yeah. Ah, now this, this is coming off. That's nice. Okay. But, uh, Jesus, and now it's stuck here behind this rim, so I don't think this comes off first. Yeah. I'm feeling a bit like a mechanical engineer now, not like uh, someone doing electronics, but uh, hey. That's the beauty of this hobby, is that everything comes a bit together. This is almost off now, but um, almost. Okay. Oh. So I got the wheel off, and as you see, um, it has a a cog wheel here on the in the inside, which drives the other one, which contains the dial pointer. Okay, now uh, let's see. Oh, this is now totally loose. Or, well, totally. It's still, because it's so rusted, it, it's, it, the, its diameter is too thick to go through these holes, I think. Oh, come on. Come on. I am gaining something, but... Ugh. I will have to clean my desk after this, or my workbench, because... Let's do it like this. <gasps> oh my god! Okay. Wow. I can imagine why this thing wouldn't want to turn anymore. Jesus. Okay. Okay, see the tuning condenser is actually turning surprisingly well still. So, so that's fine actually. But um, 
if you want to de-rust it and clean it and restore it nicely also on the inside then everything will have to come apart anyway okay um, now how to get the gangs out um, the only way I can see here is see this part yeah, don't mind my dirty fingers I'm not gonna wash them every time I want to shoot a video um, see this is covering up the end of the spindle here or end of the axis and then here on the the part of the gang that moves the blades let's say there you have two screws holding them in place um, but that that's it I mean I don't see how else this would um, come apart so let me just first remove this cover plate here and then see what's underneath I suspect the dust and rust I wanted to say but there's a sort of washer that fell out okay okay oh there is a, a ball bearer bearing in here see okay so see how this works um, see we have this piece over here which was attached to the chassis um, via this wire which I desoldered that is actually a spring on each gang which presses the entire shaft to the left because the gangs they are obviously fixed to the shaft via these screws now um, I believe that if I loosen all these six screws then um, I guess the entire axis should come out now this one comes off but this one yeah it also comes off but um, if I loosen all three gangs come on you have to be really careful with these screws because I think they are brass or at least very soft metal so you have to loosen them first time right because otherwise yeah you're on the risk of running them out and okay one left okay see they are all three loose now and is the shaft coming through yeah indeed okay okay we got the shaft out and now obviously every gang should also come out separately yep here we have the blades they are still okay-ish they do have a bit of slight oxidation here on the edges I will clean them thoroughly anyway and the last one okay now these springs they can also come out via this screw because these parts they don't need to be painted they just need to be cleaned I only need to paint the cage of the um, entire condenser see because this needs to this is sort of brass see so this just needs to be cleaned and polished small detail um, that I forgot to mention see there is a, a washer here on the front side of the tuning condenser that holds the shaft and all these pieces they are all made from brass according to me because they are all shiny golden really nice I think it'll look great once it is um, cleaned and polished and painted it'll look fantastic it, it'll look a bit steampunk like I think 
I'm really looking forward to seeing this restored. Now getting these blade assemblies out, um, it, it's not really obvious at first sight to see how to do it because see you have like lots of screws here on top, lots of screws on the bottom, so you have uh, two rows of screws and then you have holes drilled to reach these screws. There is one missing over there, um, which I, I don't know why, but okay. Um, I think that you need to loosen the back part, so the six screws in the back here, and here as well, these six screws here on the back. But I'm not completely sure. Um, I think so, because according to me, that is what is holding it to the chassis. Let's try it first here with the first tuning gang. They loosen easily, that's already good news. And again, it's brass, what is underneath. And the screws are also brass. So, don't know if that's enough to loosen them, but um, let's also do these two at the bottom here. Oh, there are washers underneath. Yeah, there are small brass washers underneath. Okay, let me just make sure I don't lose those. Okay, this one is glued in place by the by the paint. Is it coming loose? I think so. See here as well. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it's not free. See, this is also still, uh, oh yeah. So this is attached to that, that is attached to that. Okay, I also need to loosen this. Mom, this is so full of dirt. These screws that you then can't even get your screwdriver in there. I could also loosen this, but um, yeah, maybe that's a better idea. No, I'm gonna loosen this. Okay, the tuning gang is out, I think. Yeah, see? Okay. So, we are having the other parts of the tuning blades here, and you have this piece of board that looks like a piece of, yeah, it feels a bit like PCB board or a, um, yeah, I don't know, wafer board that is sitting on there. You also have a piece on top, but that one I loosened totally because it's also attached to this part. Um, so, yeah, it, it's still okay, I think, to get everything out of here. See, because now I only have this part left and I can loosen that with this screw. I think maybe the idea is to remove these caps here first before you remove the tuning gang. So removing this part first is probably the idea. See, this is the other wafer and here we have the connect the point to make the connection to the tuner um, and see there is a piece of plastic underneath here probably as an isolator yeah to isolate it from the um, cage of the tuning condenser 
Um, okay. And you see these parts, they all need to be cleaned very well because, um, yeah. Okay, so um, let me just do the same thing for these two tuning gangs over here. And then I think we have it fully disassembled. Okay, um, I've got the entire tuning condenser disassembled. See, we've got all the pieces over here. Um, all the screws and yeah, all the parts sorted. Um, so I guess it's time for me to start cleaning. And if you see, have a look at the cage here. If you wonder why it's necessary. Yeah, look at the inside. It's completely dirty and rusted and uh, yeah. It really needs a good clean. And um, so the idea is to clean everything first. Um, obviously all the parts here, everything that is brass will be polished. Um, everything that isn't brass will simply be cleaned. Um, and then the cage here for the tuning condenser, um, there the goal is to paint it again um, and to um, strip, yeah, well, get rid of all the rust first. So that'll first need to be cleaned and then de rusted and uh, yeah, that'll be the most amount of work, I guess. Okay, so I managed to get all the paint off. Um, that was actually quite easy with some acetone um, on a rack and a brush and everything just wiped off very easily. The difficult part was getting in everywhere and well to remove all the paint, uh, see? Now, obviously, the rust is now very apparent, and um, here you can see how bad the issue with the rust is, actually. Um, so the next step is gonna be getting the rust off, um, and then it's ready for painting. But first, yeah, <laughs> the rust is uh, going to be the most difficult part of this, I think. Okay, um, so I got nearly all the rust off, I guess. Um, this was a hell of a lot of work. Um, I sanded everything with a rotary tool uh, and some steel brushes on the rotary tool. And especially the inner parts here were uh, very difficult to reach. But I think I got uh, all the rust off. Um, maybe some very small spots here and there, but in any case, all the rust that was loose was off. Um, so I guess this is now ready for a new layer of paint. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is degrease uh, this thing. <laughs> um, probably with some acetone, I think. And then we're gonna apply a primer um, just to protect it a bit against rusting. And then also to make sure that uh, the, the normal paint is uh, adhering a bit better to the, to the metal. Um, so yeah, first job is to get a primer here on this casing. And also here, see these are the two shafts that were removed earlier and they have also been de-rusted. And they look fine actually, if you remember how this looked earlier. Yeah, that is a clear difference, right? Um, and also I've already cleaned the, um, the blades or how do you call this? Um, and they also, they came out really fine. I, I put them in the ultrasonic cleaner and they came out impeccable. Um, what is also interesting is I just put this entire thing here in the ultrasonic cleaner and this cable came out really nice. I mean, it was very dirty, but now it looks pretty good. I'm, it, it Now I even can see that it's brown. <laughs> I originally thought it was black. But now I can see that it's brown. And um, now I don't know if this is a good idea to soak this type of cable in water. But um, yeah, the, the result is there. I mean, it looks impeccable. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, like I said, next step is giving this a primer. Okay, and here we have the first layer of primer. Um, applied um, and this is a primer that is um, 
protects very well against rust and um, also is uh, very f filling. Um, so it, it should fill like uneven tees and scratches rather well. So that's the goal, obviously, of putting a primer on first. And then, of course, also to make sure that the, the, um, the real paint, uh, yeah, uh, attaches better to the, to the metal. Now, this is already very nice, I think. Um, now, the idea is obviously to have the final color as close as possible to the original. Um, and for that, I did a bit of color matching. So this is one of the shields of the tube, of the, I think, the 58 tubes. Um, and as I already explained, um, everything on this uh, chassis is painted in the same color. So the tuning condenser, the shields, but the, also the transformer, I think, and everything on the chassis is painted in the same color. And it's this dark green yeah almost army like color so what i did is i got my um yeah set of uh, sample colors um this is a set of ral or ral colors i don't know how common these are um outside europe but here in europe they are extremely common um so i just started checking which color here matches most closely this um yeah, the color that is here on the chassis. Um, and I found two, basically. I found here the 6006. Now, I don't know how good this will show on camera. But, um, yeah, I think you can see even on camera. Let me check here. That this is rather close. The top one here, 6006. And then there is a second one that is really close. And that's the 615. And um, yeah, it's difficult to show them both at the same time, but uh, my opinion, it's difficult with this lighting here <laughs> on the on screen, but my opinion is that the 615 is the closest and the 606 is maybe a tad too brown. Um, so I chose the 615. In any case, I'm going to repaint anything. So it, I, I want it to be as close as possible, but the 606 would also have worked, I think, because I'm going to repaint everything anyway. So I picked up a can of 615, ordered it online. Um, if you look at the hood of the can here, it's not quite identical, but the, yeah, this is plastic. I'm not sure how correct this will be um, but it's definitely close enough so um, see RAL 615 okay okay so we've got the first layer of paint on here and um, I think it's already quite okay the color is not exactly the same but more than close enough I think um, it's a bit lighter than I expected but it needs a second coat so maybe that will get it a bit darker um, I have to say um, I didn't start with the most easy <laughs> piece of the radio to paint because yeah, you have all these compartments and all these different weird shapes so it's not easy to reach everything very well with a spray uh, can and then when you try to reach in the in the edges and uh, around the corners then you run the risk of covering a um, single area twice and that's what we got here so um, see here on the bottom um, yeah it was sitting up like this and I hit this bit too much with paint so we had some yeah excess paint dripping off here um, so that's not good, um, but the remaining part of the tuning condenser is quite okay. Um, yeah, as you see, there are some areas which have yeah a bit yeah not enough paint. So I do need to hit it with a second coat. But um, for the rest, apart from this piece, it is quite good. Now what I'm gonna try to do is li very lightly sand this part over here so that it's flat again or flush again 
And um, so then when I hit it with a second layer, then that should be gone. Obviously, I'm now sanding through the paint here, and yeah, you see the primer again underneath. I think that's unavoidable, but since we're gonna give it a second coat anyway, yeah, it is coming off. I mean, the the drips are going away. Yeah. So let me just give this entire area here a quick very light sand um, to get it smooth again and then yeah I'm gonna give it a second layer of, of paint so this is the wheel of the tuning condenser um, and this also needs to be repainted um, I already removed the rust as much as I could let me just show you now what I was talking about how easily this paint comes off so I have here some acetone See, it just wipes off. <laughs> so um, I'm just gonna remove all the paint. Yeah, it's already done, basically. Just gonna remove all the paint from here and then also put it in a bit of vinegar to remove the rust because there is quite a bit of rust here also on the inside of the wheel. And then we're gonna also give this the same new paint job as uh, as the cage of the tuning condenser itself um, and same for this part this is the holder for the dial lamp um, I already removed the paint and de-rusted that one and that's also gonna get a new layer of paint okay so from this part over here see this blade has come loose um, now, and these are soldered here all three to the shaft and the middle one here has yeah come loose um, so we'll need to solder it back. Now there is still a bit of solder left here, so I know more or less what the position should have been. So we can use that as a guide to know a bit where we have to um, solder these things back together. Now these springs are made of brass, the shaft is also made of brass, so how do you solder brass? It's actually not that difficult if you have the right um, tools. Um, so first of all you need some solder flux, some universal solder flux, so not the... So yeah, this is normal solder flux for like plumbing purposes, so not the one that you use on electronics. Um, and then you need um, solder which um, contains silver. So this is 97% uh, um, tin. 3% silver. Um, it's 2 millimeter thick solder, so it's quite thick. Usually, uh, when two parts are, two brass parts are being soldered together, the reason why you're soldering them is you want to keep them together because you want the solder to be structural. Um, whereas with electronics, you usually have a physical structural connection between the two, and then the solder itself is just an electrical connection. It doesn't it it's, shouldn't be structural. Where here the actual point is to keep the things in place. Because see, if I move it, yeah, then they come loose. So the difficult part is actually most of the time lining them up or putting them in such a position that um, they, they are actually in the correct position when you're soldering them. That is usually the most difficult part. Um, so I'm just going to try it like this. I've Put them on the table here, um, and I think it's more or less the correct position. Um, and I hope that they won't move too much <laughs> while I'm soldering. So first thing is applying some flux. Now I am using here a rather white uh, tip on my soldering iron and I'm also setting the temperature, temperature quite high so um, yeah see here we already have the problem that uh, these, it, it won't stay in place.
Um, yeah, it's stuck, but I don't think there's a lot of solder holding it in place, so I'm just going to add a bit more. Okay, um, that's attached again. Um, now what I also like to do here is to clean this off with, uh, clean the flux off with uh, isopropyl because this flux is quite corrosive and it will um, cause staining and things like that on, on the brass. So it will corrode the brass after a while um, and you don't want that, obviously. So I'm just cleaning this off here. And see, we have a nice and um, structural connection here, see? Um, which, yeah, should keep in place rather nicely, um, but yeah, we'll see when we put the condenser back together if I did it correctly and maybe we'll have to adjust it a bit more um, when it's back together. Okay, so here we are again. Um, the cage of the condenser has received the second coat of paint and uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty nice. Um, the color is maybe a bit lighter than it originally was, but I'm still happy with it, I believe. It really looks great. Now the next part obviously is putting everything back together. Um, I have cleaned all the parts like the shafts for example. These were totally de-rusted because <laughs> you remember how rusty they were. Um, so they have been cleaned and, and completely de-rusted. Um, all the bolts and screws are all cleaned also de-rusted if needed. Um, same for the yeah Compartments of the condenser, they were cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner, um, so these should also be fine. And interestingly enough, this part over here, um, this half of the of the of the gang, I just put it like this. Right, let me put this aside. I just put it like that in total in the ultrasonic cleaner, including the wire. I thought, yeah, pff, let's put it in there and see <laughs> what the result is. And I have to admit, it looks fantastic. I mean, it looks like new, the cloth covering here on the wire. See, now um, I can see that it's actually dark brown, that it's not a black wire. And it honestly, it looks like new. Now, the thing is, obviously, I don't know if this is a good practice to do it like that. Um, because, yeah, this is a cloth covering and um, you're basically completely soaking it in water when you're putting it in an ultrasonic cleaner. So I don't know if um, moisture will get or gets in there and then gets inside in the in the wiring and if that might not cause issues in the longer term. But um, so if you know, let me know if you have any idea if it is a good idea or not. But it, it's extremely clean. So yeah, I, now I'm really tempted to put other wires that I desolder or that are really dirty also in the ultrasonic cleaner. I don't know if it's a good idea. Um, yeah, if somebody has a has an idea about this or knows more about this, let me know. Post it in the comments. But it's yeah, the result is there. I mean, it's it's incredibly clean. Okay, so um, let me put start putting things together here. Um, I'm not gonna film the reassembly, maybe just some small parts to give you an ID, but you've seen the disassembly, so the assembly is just the disassembly, but backwards, obviously. So I'm not gonna film it, the entire thing here. Okay, so I've got the gangs back in. Um, now, before I continue, uh, <laughs> I just wanna quickly explain what I did, because otherwise I'll forget how I did it, because uh, it has been quite tricky to get them back in. Um, I just put a temporary knob here on so that I can turn them and you see 
they are turning a, quite freely. Um, now, first of all, this thing over here, I might have mentioned earlier in the video that this is for tension, but that's definitely not the case. It's just to make sure that it makes uh, contact with the tuning ganks. Um, so that should be tight against the spindle here of the of each tuning gang. Put this aside and put it in last. So first thing you do is you put the shaft in from the right hand side here. Um, this washer here also goes, or yeah, it's not really a washer because it's a, it, ha it has a flange. Um, that goes here uh, from the right hand side also. So that stops basically the shaft to be able to slide left and right. Um, um, then uh, next you close up the with this part here. Notice I've also painted that one uh, black and uh, gave that a new uh, layer of paint as well. So this you use to um, seal, let's say, the, the shaft in place. Okay, um, And then you uh, position each um, yeah, gang, <laughs> I don't know how to call it otherwise, um, in such a position that they are more or less in the middle here, so you can shift them around. Wait, I can release one and then I'll show you. See, so this one, you can shift it around a bit, um, and if you should position it a bit more or less in the middle, also important, um, this should be on the outside. See, this gang here has these cuts. They are used to um, make some adjustments, so that should be on the outside. So if you slide it in, don't slide it in like this. See, because now it's in between here. No, that should go on the outside. So you should slide it in like that, okay? And now you can position this one by moving it left or right, and then you see more or less that the blades are in the center, here on top and also on the bottom, and then you tighten it. I think it still needs to go a bit more to the left, because here on the bottom, I think they are still touching. Yeah, this should be fine. Yeah, like this. And here as well. And there you go. And you do that for all three um, gangs. And then you can check for shorts um, with your multimeter by setting your multimeter to um, yeah continue continuity test. One lead you clip to this side. That's the common ground, let's say, for all three gangs. And then the other lead you can clip here to the gang that you want to test. I'm gonna put it back down and I'm gonna put my multimeter in shot here. Wait, just gonna lay it here flat on the bench. Um, and then I have it on continuity test. No, no shorts, which is how it should be. And you can do that for each gang. What you can also do is put it here to capacity test. Um, I have dot, dot four seven nanofarad here. See, and if I open the tuner, then it goes to zero, obviously. Um, and yeah, obviously that can also be adjusted by moving the capacitor, but I honestly don't know what it should be. See, this one is 38. This one is 37. And this one is 46, 47, so hmm, maybe we can make them a bit closer together. See, now it's zero, obviously, because it's shorting out. 36, 38, yeah, 38, that will be then it's 37, then it's more or less the same as the other two gangs. So, um, 37. And it 
doesn't touch anywhere. Okay, great. Um, I think that's, but oh yeah, and then in the end you slide this in. Um, and here there is one screw to keep this in place. So that you should just do, well, I'm outside the picture again. Here this part, um, that you should just do right at the end. Um, and then here you fasten it with this screw. Um, so yeah, there are some indents here so that you can just to keep it in place. But um, that's it. Just do it at the end because it will complicate your life a lot when you're trying to adjust these uh, three gangs with this thing in the way and it's pushing all over the place. So yeah, it took me quite a while to figure this out, the correct order to put it, to put things back together. But um, once you figure it out, it's actually not that bad. It's don't be afraid of uh, uh, taking a tuning condenser apart. It's, it's actually not that bad. And there we have it. The tuning condenser is fully done. And um, mind me say so, but I think it looks spectacular. This combination of this green military color with those shiny metal uh, gangs and brass elements, it really feels steampunk-like. Uh, it feels like it's part of a steam engine or something. It looks really, really cool, I think. And I am absolutely stoked with the result. Um, now this really sets the bar for the rest of the radio, I think, right? Um, there are only a couple of things that I still need to do. First one is I need a new rubber here um, for around the, yeah, the dial. Um, so I can't adjust it yet with this shaft. I also didn't attach the shaft yet. I can only adjust it at the moment like this. Um, and that's because I need a new rubber ring uh, around here. See, this one is completely deteriorated. Um, I do have some rubber, um, but I'm still thinking about how I can cut a piece exactly circle in a, a correct circle from a normal plain piece of rubber. I'm still thinking about that. So that still needs to be done. And then there is a second thing you probably might not have noticed, but um, you see the, these screws here, there are quite a bit of screws that obviously all, I all took them off and they were originally painted black um, and I think they were painted black for securing them. Um, because you can see, let me just quickly show you a bit closer, so you can see these, these pieces of paint here also on the condenser itself over there. Um, so I'm thinking about, um, yeah, painting these black again or putting a dab of black paint again on those um, just so that they look good. Um, see all of these as well here in the back. Um, and also to secure them, obviously. So I'm thinking about still doing that, but I'll do that right at the end because you never know. Maybe there is still something wrong here with the tuning condenser and I still need to take it apart again. But I'll do that right at the end. Um, oh, and there is a third thing. I have here a new grommet for the dial lamp. But um, yeah, this was the only grommet that I had in stock which fitted the hole. But the inner size is too big for the dial lamp. See, it just wiggles around. So I also need to come up with something for that. But you will probably see that in the video where we put the chassis, where we put it back on the chassis um, because I'll, I'll, I'll go and think about that and search for that offline. Um, but for the rest, I think it looks amazing. Ah, yeah, I also, here I aligned these two um, cogwheels correctly again, see? So that the, this is rotating again because normally the pointer should be attached to this. The idea is to create a new pointer and attach it to this. So see, that piece is also rotating again. So that's good, actually. Um, and I think it's functioning as it should. And as you see, I've also bought a Lazy Susan because I think it looks nice in a video. And um, yeah, with this spectacular guy, it was really the best thing, uh, I think, to pull out the Lazy Susan for the first time. So, okay. Um, I hope you haven't fallen asleep uh, in this video because there was really nothing electronic about this one at all. But um, 
If you haven't, I hope you liked the result. And then I hope I'll see you in the next video um, about the restoration of this beautiful radio. So catch you later and take care. Bye bye.